the day of the Christmas party for the worship team here at church was held down at our coffee shop. And it was a beautiful evening, and we had a great time. Stan and I were making chocolate chip cookies for everybody and passing them out. But towards the end of the night, he had a raging headache, which was very rare. So we went home, and, and he laid down on the couch and got a little bit sick to his stomach. And so he decided to sleep there. And um, after he finally went to sleep, I went and laid down. And when I came back out in the morning, he was still sleeping there. So I thought he was okay. So I sat down and started watching TV. And then I heard this funny noise. And I said, honey, what are you doing? And I turned around and looked, and he wasn't on the couch. So I stood up, thought I was going to go and help him in the, in the bathroom. What I found was he was in a seizure on the floor. He had fallen off the couch and he was in a seizure. And when he stopped the seizure, there was no life there. And um, I had been, being a minister, I'd been with people that have died and, and you know when their spirit is gone. And to me, that's what it seemed like. And uh, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't reach my family on the phone. I couldn't reach anybody. I was just standing there alone with my husband laying on the floor, and something came to me. So I walked over to my husband of 39 years, and I got on my knees, and I put my hands on him, and I said, You shall live, and you shall not die, and you shall declare the glory of the Lord. And that was very powerful to me because I believe the Word of God. And... I stood up and I waited and then I heard the sirens coming. When the paramedics came in, they took one look at him and they rolled him up quick and they said, this, we need to get him out of here real fast. And they took him, they said basically he would be a vegetable, that he would never have a normal mind, that he would be paralyzed if he lived, which they didn't think he would. One guy specifically took my son and I aside and told me that he would not live any longer and that I had to get used to that. So I had to go home and call my family together and tell them that the man said that Stan was going to die. At that point was the changing point of this story. And that was when all my family came together and I told them what the doctors had said. And I said, we have to make a choice if we're going to make a stand or we're going to let your dad go. They said, what do you want, Mom? And I said, I want him to live and not die, and he shall declare the glory of the Lord. That's it. And they said, then we're 100% with you. At that moment, I knew that God was calling me to make a stand. His faith fell on me, not my faith, but the gift of faith. And in that, I was able to make a stand where all I said was the word of God, all I said was positive. All I knew was that my husband was going to rise up out of there and he would be whole, 110% body, mind, and spirit. It was a long road. It was a very hard road. But the word of God was what made us be able to get through. It was a gift of faith. It was different than regular faith. It was the gift of faith that fell upon me, and I knew it because it wasn't anything I had. It was God. And God needed the glory, nobody else but God. And from that point on, the journey for me, the faith part of the journey for me became, my part was to tell the doctors, no, that's not gonna happen to me. Because every doctor came in the room and tried to give me this elongated list of extenuating circumstances that come from having a stroke. You're gonna be debilitated, you can't do this, you won't be able to do this, you can't do that. And I just kept telling the doctors, no. And they go, well, you don't understand, Mr. Pritchard. I said, no, you don't understand. This. That's not gonna happen, this can't happen. Um, one thing after another, there were blood clots in my legs that mysteriously went away through prayer. When they took the tre tracheotomy out, the very next morning it, it, it closed up and healed and I could talk, which is very unheard of in that situation. And the speech therapist didn't understand what to do about that. Most of the nurses were all Christians. They were really wonderful to have around. And when the, the morning the tracheotomy healed up, uh, I, I came to, I set up, and little Remy came in in the morning and she said, good morning, Mr. Pritchard, like she did every morning. And I said, well, good morning, Remy, God bless you. And she just started screaming, oh, thank you, Jesus. She was running up down the halls 
speaking about what a miracle was going on and you need to come see this. And all the nurses were like that. So the, the whole thing was a pleasant experience in that realm. I'm just getting stronger every day physically. So I'm looking forward to just getting on. It's a great testimony. I sort of got a guaranteed sermon now. I can preach on healing anytime you want. So <laughs> because God still is and will remain to be the healer. And nothing, nothing that's happened out of this was anything that we could have orchestrated or anything we could have done to make happen. It, ha it is God, it is totally God. It is His will and His, His touch in our lives and on me. And I can go for the rest of my life, I can argue with anybody about the healing power of God because there's no argument. He's the healer. Thank you.